Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Mark Lambert from uh, Theta's Pendulum. It's uh, approximately 1025 Eastern Standard Time in the United States, and I've uh, already just closed out a couple trades. Uh, I'm going to show what my setup was this morning and uh, explain why I took the trade. Um, I did have a uh, small loss last night because I ended up buying five uh, ES calls yesterday. Um, basically, at the close, with uh, the horrific move we had down, I got stopped out uh, last evening, which uh, it's okay. You know, that's what the stop losses are there for. Sometimes you have losers, and uh, just being objective into uh, what we have to do is uh, the way you make money in this uh, game because you're not, not every single trade you're going to have is going to be a winner. And, anyways, I'm going to show you this setup that I had here. Uh, this is the uh, yesterday's sell off in the afternoon. This is on the Russell 2000. Where obviously, after the close, this baby just like dropped like a rock. Uh, only to uh, have supported overnight and move back up again. And by the time I had my trading day start this morning, was uh, I'd seen this move right here and I wasn't really paying a whole lot of attention to it yet at that point in time. Seen it come back up move back down. This time I had form the secondary uh, high or low. At that point in time I threw a fib on and I saw that uh, we were starting to move back up. I ended up I bought I think right at this area right here. Um, basically trailed it up for a uh, 4.7 point winner uh, as I was moving up over here and I used these little indicators which are very very simple indicators just so that on a 133 tick chart I have it set up as a uh, the blue line is a 20 period triangular moving average, which is a little bit slower. And uh, the green balls I have that set up as a uh, 20 period dynamic exponential moving average, which is a very very fast moving average. I kind of use it from time to time as like a crossover indicator um, to follow the market. Uh, so basically, just a trade. Close it out right at around this area right here. Um, actually, it's probably more like right around this area because I know I did make it up to here and as I started coming back down, I think I used the indicators crossover or when the candles busted back down through the indicators as my uh, as my safety play to get out of the trade because when I look at it this way, it looks like we've made from this area here one, two, and then I saw this again as a uh, one, two. Three, four, five moving flexion. Don't know yet. Is this an A, B, C? Or is this a one, two, and then a larger degree wave one that's moving on right now? Which, as a matter of fact, the second trade I ended up taking, I, I took right here at this level, but I closed it out prematurely. I just closed it out a few minutes ago at the 127.2 because I actually stopped there, came back down, stopped there, and just said, I was like, you know something, at that point in time, just move my stop up, and I got stopped out. Uh, I'd rather have uh, two profits than two losses anytime. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna write about the fact that I didn't gain the whole move. Uh, but basically, the reason why I took this trade one was because of this secondary. Uh, second of all, I was also watching the market internals, which also confirmed the same move right here at this level. Um, I got another setup of this on my other computer, which I watch on full screen anyway. Um, basically, once I saw that, I knew it was good. And also, by using the basics of wave counting, I could see that we had done a seven corrective wave move down. Any wave count of seven waves is considered corrective. And when you look at the inclination of this move, it had been moving up, up impulsively, and then everything else was seven waves down when you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven waves. They were all overlapping, which is telling me that this is a correction and I should be looking to get another well. Long out of this, whether it's a long that's going to hold or not, doesn't matter because I already closed it out. And uh, once I took on this long, I, I, I immediately threw another fib on to uh, gauge the direction of this when I get out at the 127.2. Uh, obviously, now it's going up to the 161.8 to the tick. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Now, I, I would almost look at this right now as uh, either sideways consolidation that's going to start, or if this could be wave one, two. We're in wave three now. Maybe we'll do a wave four back down here somewhere, and then we'll thrust back up. But I am looking for this top right here to be attacked. Uh, we've come very close to it already, but uh, 
you know, like all things, it doesn't always work out exactly the way we want to, but uh, hey, two good trades. You know, they, they pulled out probably close to uh, six points out of the market already for me this morning. And uh, considering the fact that I started trading at 9.30 and it's only 10.30 now, uh, so if I say it's a, it's a pretty good day so far. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to take on any other trades for the rest of the day. I think when the market throws you a gift, you just take it and then uh, don't be greedy and look for more. But if I do see another setup that does set up and if it sets up in a, such a way that it's very, very objective and and it shows me what's going on, then I think I will take the trade. But this is the basis of how I use Elliott Wave and Fibonacci uh, projection during the daytime. And I do hope that you find these videos informative, and that they help you out, and uh, you know, just kind of show you how you don't you don't need to look for the big, big swings all the time. I mean, you get six points like this in an hour's worth of time, and that's a very, very good day. So. Anyways, I will be signing off till uh, the next time. Anyways, everybody, Godspeed and good trading to you, and uh, talk to you soon. Have a great day.